If you see this logo at the top of your game, buckle up, because you're about to go for a ride. Suda51 is the man responsible, and even if you're not 100% on board with what his titles have to offer, you gotta admit that they're unique. In Lollipop Chainsaw, you play as Juliet Starling, bubbly cheerleader, lollipop enthusiast, and member of a long family lineage of badass zombie hunters. Yes, it is more than a little reminiscent of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but to quote Oscar Wilde, talent borrows, but genius quotes Oscar Wilde. Really, the overall story and personality this game oozes with are what sets it apart from so many other hack and slashers. Specifically, the boss fights are standouts. Each dark purveyor, summoned by Turbo Goth Swan, is based around different musical genres and require clever strategies to best in combat. Speaking of music, the soundtrack is superb. Between brilliantly implemented pop music and key moments of the plot, Silent Hill's Akira Yamaoka and mindless self-indulgence's Jimmy Urich offer a huge variety of memorable and downright catchy tunes. Note that I haven't said much about the gameplay itself, that's mostly because there really isn't a whole lot to say. It's solid enough, and becomes more fun as you unlock combo attacks and finishers, plus using your boyfriend's disembodied skull as a variety of weapons is amusing throughout. But that's about it. Still, what'll keep you pushing forward is all of the fun, weird stuff you'll come across. Each stage is fairly long, and no two feel too similar. From the mind-melting drug trip of O'Bannon Farm to the retina-scarring neon nightmare that is the Fulci Fun Center, you will absolutely get sucked into the world of the game. While Suda51 is ostensibly the brainchild of the experience, the story itself can be credited to James Gunn, dearly departed architect of Marvel Studios' Guardians of the Galaxy, and graduate of Tromaville Academy. You can tell, too, his fingerprints are all over this thing. Tasteless jokes, bizarre pop culture references, love letters to the 80s, and a surprising amount of heart. Juliet and Nick's relationship manages to stay sweet and obnoxiously cute, even when rotting guts, dismembered limbs, and severed heads are flying everywhere. If any of this seems appealing to you, I say go for it. You could definitely do worse things with a few free hours of your time, and God knows I have. What are you gonna do? Throw magic stars at chupacabras with your tongue? Maybe, Dad. Nick's tongue is very limber. And how do you know that? She doesn't. She doesn't know that at all, sir. She has no idea if my tongue is limber. Ugh! <laughs>